this is where we bring the sewing machine in. Uh, at this point, it's quite a good idea to pin your laces out of the way to make sure you don't catch them in any of the seams. And just sew straight down the back. And the same for the internal lining as well. There's going to be a vent at the back. And so, do you remember the tailor's tacks that we put in? That's where we've got to stop sewing. Now, the number of times in the past I've just kept on sewing like an idiot. What I do now is I place a pin to remind myself not to go any further, as well as the tax itself. Now, this is where everything starts coming together. Start with the linings and you fix them together only at the shoulder. The next step is to sew on your collar. Now your collar is still in two separate pieces and you sew it across the top between the two red dots that you've marked with your tailor's tacks. So now it's time to put the front and the back together. And uh, you can see here on the collar that there's the central seam where the two pieces are sewn together, but also the seams from where it's been pieced. And it's a matter of watching out for your red dots that you've had there and centering it all and pin it all together. The first row of stitches you do is round the arm sky. Next we come to the bit that always catches me out, I don't know about you, but it's stitching around the outside of the vest when you get to the collar and then going around the top of the collar and then down the front of it. The problem is turning the point at which the lapels meet the collar. The tailor tacks which you put in right at the beginning mark where all of the seam allowances intersect. So as you are sewing around the top of the lapel, you have to flip the seam allowance for the collar out of the way and then stop stitching at the red dot. And here we are turning the vent. Now the footage I took wasn't very clear, so I mocked up how to do this with some paper. You sew along the bottom, turn the corner and come up to where you've made a small cut at the red dot. Then you fold the seam allowance in 
and then you're starting to sew down the other side. Pull it out of the way, bring the other side down, fold out the seam allowance, and then sew down and on. Now comes the time to turn it the right side out. Starting at the gap in the lining, put your hand through and follow it up, then go across the shoulders and down the other side until you can take hold of the far corner. Once you've pulled it through, it's a matter of uh, pulling it all into place. Better not do what I did and leave the pins in. So take the pins out that are holding the uh, strings in place before you start the whole process. Right, after the ironing, it's beginning to look like a waistcoat. And on the back, we can now see how those ties spread the load. But we're not finished yet. Up where I turned the collar, I stopped just a little bit short of what the pattern tells me to do, so as to give myself a bit of space, because what I've done in the past is I've gone over and sewn onto the seam allowance. And that way, I've made it all puckered up and unpleasant. It also gives me an opportunity to take out all of the red tailor's tacks that I put in there earlier on. Next, we do the outside of the sides. After I've pressed the seams inside out on both sides, it's now left to me to slip stitch all the way at the inside, here and here. And that completes the construction of both the outside and the inside of it. Right, there we are. We're getting very close to the end now. I've uh, slip stitched the sides and pressed it and put three tacks in the collar there, there and there as uh, the pattern says I ought to. Okay we're nearly there now. Next stage is the buttons. Now I went on to eBay and managed to find myself some nice old buttons There's only five of them. Obviously, you've got to get them spaced. And since there's five, that makes it easy. Identify your top and your bottom. Split the difference and then split the difference again to get your positions. Now, when I was cutting this out, I made sure that once it was closed, the patterns were going to be matching. So I've, I've marked off my positions here, but let's just get rid of those for now. We've got a pattern and once the buttons go in position, I want it to be buttoned up so that the pattern is correctly spread like that. 
I'm going to have a go at sewing these by hand. So the first step is to make sure that the uh, material is stabilised around the buttonholes. So what I've done is I put some sew stop onto both sides to make sure that once I cut the hole, it's not going to fray. And also, I've sewn a line of stitching a sixteenth of an inch away from the proposed cut of the buttonhole. I looked in two places to find out the correct technique for this. The first was in the pattern itself, and that showed that I had to do a line of stitching, as I've done here, and then the technique. Now, the counsel of perfection is that when you're cutting the uh, the hole for the buttonhole, you should try as much as possible to cut along the line of a strand so you don't end up with lots of fraying either side. Um, because it's so finely woven, I think that might be quite difficult to achieve, which is why I use the, uh, the fray stop. Hopefully that will avoid any problems. Historically, the way to do it would be with a chisel. Uh, so you've got to get the right size chisel and um, put a, a layer, usually a piece of lead underneath, whack and have a clean cut. Um, getting one of those now is quite difficult and they're actually quite expensive, so I haven't gone to the extent of that. But we need to make our cut. Um, you could either bend it like that and make your first incision. What I've done is I've taken a bodkin to make sure that my cut starts in the right place and also starts by parting the threads rather than uh, just cutting them approximately. And so I'll start with my cut. You need sharp scissors. In order to make sure you're going to have a, a clean cut from both ends, I'll cut it from this end also. There. We've got some loose ends there, and because it's not perfect, we've got that loose there as well. But the fray stop has kept, managed to keep it all in position. The advice from a tailoring video is you should then sew along here to bind the edge. The idea is just to catch any loose threads and bind them in position. There we go. Let's just make a double check that the button goes through. Fine, that works all right. Next thing to do is to wax the thread so that they go through nice and smoothly. If you can afford silk thread, then that's going to go through an awful lot better, but uh, I don't have any to hand. I'm afraid an awful lot of my sewing consists of compromises, but there we go. Now, the way I'm going to do mine is to have a bar of stitches across the bottom and then rounded at this end. You'll see as we progress. So, up through. and pull the stitch down to make the knot on the edge that's going to be the potential of fraying. And you have to be consistent in the way in which you make your loop. I'm using the stitches as my guideline to try and keep the, the line of stitches even. I'm probably talking, teaching a lot of grandmothers to suck eggs here. And if that's the case, I do apologise. Yeah, we're getting to the end now. So, we start to turn the corner. And the stitches will have to go out in a ray from the end. Okay. 
and rather than change the position of your hands, change the position of the piece. It's at this point that's quite tricky. You've got to keep those stitches on the inside quite tight. And so on. Right, there we are, all done. Not perfect, but then it makes it look a bit more genuine or authentic, doesn't it, I suppose? Well, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. The next thing is buttons. Now, I'm going to try as best I can to match the edge of this design so that we simply have a continuation of the pattern right the way across. I do this by placing a pencil there and twisting it and leaving my dot all in place. It's probably not the right way to do it according to perfect dressmaking techniques. I should measure it. But then any imperfections in my layout um, at least have been translated onto the material beneath and will make sure that the buttons fit. The last thing I want is buttons which are evenly spaced, but they don't fit with the buttonholes. So here we go with button number one. Now, those the backs of the buttons are very tightly set into the back of the button and the holes are quite difficult but i checked with a needle that you can in fact get them through and sew them on without being given too many problems so that's the first time on there we are all finished not bad for scraps of material that otherwise you might have thrown away. Mm -hmm.